Now we're going to talk about niche selection. And niche selection is, you know, rather easy. This is something that everybody overcomplicates and one of the reasons why a lot of people go out there and actually don't even continue or start off and end up quitting because they can't get this part correct. So, you know, what I'm going to share with you right now is very important that you understand there's no 100% you know, right way to do this. But I'm going to be giving you different strategic examples that you can follow and definitely one that uh, and multiple ones that you're going to be able to go out there and start implementing right now after this video. Now remember, just before I continue, I just want to let you know that this is the seven figure plan. This section is to go out there and do this rather rapidly. So you're going to notice throughout these next few videos that I'm going to be referencing whether it's some of the bonuses or whether it's some of the you know core modules in this particular course. But I want to let you know that I'm just going to be going through this in a timely manner just so you can potentially get started right away without having to worry about all the time that it takes. So. Niche selection is a strategic move, and most people choose niches completely randomly. However, you want to change it uh, or actually choose it based on scale potential. So keep that in mind. You want to actually choose it based on the ability to scale within that niche, meaning you want to be able to scale from niche A and product A to niche A and product B. So for example, if you promote dog collars, you can also sell dog harnesses. However, if you're promoting a pit bull collar, it's much harder to promote, you know, dog harnesses as a generic product if your store is just pit bulls. So yes, this goes back to more so the the question: Should I go, uh, you know, niche down or should I go broad? I personally like to go out there and start off with something a little bit more broad. For example, it's a lot easier to see if you can sell dog harnesses to pit bull lovers rather than selling pit bull harnesses to pit bull lovers. Again, you're gonna be able to do that successfully, but it's gonna be a lot harder for you to scale outwards uh, to that, right? So. And just kind of keep that in mind when you're going out there and selecting a niche that you want to have the ability to eventually scale within that niche. And that's the ultimate goal is you building out this you know fantastic brand and you building out this fantastic store that you can go out there, this fantastic asset that you can go out there and just keep adding on to and not having to worry constantly about, you know, oh, can I do this? Will this work? Because it's not really my niche. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Now, strategic implementation is probably one of the biggest factors to choosing a niche and this is kind of what you know really determines if you're going to be superly successful and a lot of people typically don't do this now remember i said i uh, in before you even join this in the workshop or maybe the sales video that you saw is that i do things a little bit differently this is one of the things that i do completely differently is i strategically implement which niche i'm going to go after based on the products and the availability of suppliers in that particular niche so the last thing you want to do is get involved with a seasonal product or a seasonal vendor that you cannot scale from now for example Christmas sweaters. You can't sell, you know, Christmas sweaters all year round. Now, technically speaking, you could. Okay. Now, Christmas sweaters can be angled into ugly sweaters, and ugly sweaters is evergreen. But if you're doing ugly Christmas sweaters, it's only available for Christmas. However, if you're doing ugly sweaters, you can do that whenever you want. Just like the dog collar example, right? So you can sell dog collars all the time, but pit bull dog collars you can only sell it to pit bull owners. So you limit yourself. With Christmas sweaters, you can only sell it during Christmas, but ugly sweaters you can sell it whenever. You cannot sell anything else to go along with Christmas sweaters, which is also pretty dang hard to kind of understand. So when you're going out there and selling a Christmas sweater, what else can you sell with a Christmas sweater to make you even more money, right? It's not like you can sell them, uh, you know, an ugly Christmas face or something like that. I, I don't know what you could sell. That's a thing is that when you're selling an ugly Christmas sweater or a Christmas sweater, well, maybe you could sell Christmas pants, but that's the farthest you can go. There's nothing else that these people are going to want. If they're, if they're coming, you have to understand the mentality behind it, right? So think about it. If you're going out there and purchasing a Christmas sweater, more than likely, you only need one because you're only going to be using it one time out of the year, which is on Christmas, and more than likely, you won't ever wear it again, and if you do, you're going to want another one. So it's not in your best interest to go out there personally for you and offer a Christmas sweater because of the fact that you, there's nothing else that you can really sell. But on the flip side of it, because every negative has a positive, keep that in mind, the, the positive part about this is, yeah, you're going to be able to collect a lot of leads and customers if you sell that Christmas sweater during Christmas, but you really can't sell 
sell them anything else, right? Well, you can't immediately. You, maybe you can in the future, but you know we're talking about niche selection here based on products. Just kind of understand that right now. But if you were to sell Christmas sweaters, it also ties you down into the Christmas season only. So if somebody comes to your store or your asset and purchases something during Christmas for you know the Christmas season, whether it's ornaments, lights, uh, Christmas sweater, whatever it is, wrapping paper, they're going to tie you down. They're going to associate your asset with a particular season at that point. But if they're going there and just purchasing an ugly sweater, you become the ugly sweater store. So during uh, during you know Christmas, when they're looking for an ugly sweater, they're going to go ahead and associate you with an ugly sweater store. And it just so happens that you have Christmas stuff or right? you have Christmas sweaters. So that's what you kind of have to keep in mind. Rather than going out there and being the ugly Christmas sweater store, you're going to go out there and be the store with ugly sweaters. And it just so happens that you have Christmas based sweaters as well. All right. So never limit yourself to holidays unless it's for sales benefits. For example, Christmas, right? I just said ugly, uh, ugly sweaters. And the benefit for you having Christmas ugly sweaters is being able to position it as for Christmas. So that's the strategic implementation when it comes down to niches. You got to dive a little bit deeper than just the face of it. You have to understand why people are buying and if it's something that they're going to keep on or perhaps refer other people to buy from your particular asset. Now, finding the right niche for you. Here's a few different categories that you can start looking into if you're having a hard time. So passion is one of the major components of finding a good niche. Now, if you're passionate about paintball, then sell paintball items. If you're passionate about dogs, then go ahead into the dog niche. If you're passionate about electronics, go into the electronics niche. And here's the thing. People tell you, oh, only go into a niche that you know is profitable. And it's wrong because every niche is profitable, right? Now, it's going to be easier for you. And I'm going to tell you why I choose this and why I choose to go this route out when I actually create these stores. And this is another reason why I do things a little bit differently and it works. Works better than anybody else can tell you on how to use other strategies. It works because if I'm going out there and I love, and I love, love, love dogs, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to know how to speak the lingo. I'm going to know why people do a certain thing. For example, I can actually go out there and talk to my audience. You Like for example, if I were to go ahead and say, you know how your voice gets te- your voice gets 10 net- uh, notches higher when you're talking to your dog? And I can put that in words and put that on my website you know when your voice gets 10 notches higher talking to that puppy that you love right so it it plays off the story in their head and it goes a little bit deeper than simply uh, than simply hey a dog here's this dog product right it's no you're getting this dog product because you know when you talk to your dog with your voice 10 notches higher right so again it's like oh yeah wait a minute that makes sense so again passion is huge you're going to be able to talk in their lingo you're going to be able to understand why they do what they do and you're really going to be able to go out there and start piecing together your your asset and your store and also your creatives when it gets to ads and whatnot to get traffic, you're going to be able to learn how to and know without even having to learn as a matter of fact, you're going to just automatically be able to tap into that particular audience because you already know what's happening. And in demand and hype. Now, think about this. Fidget spinners were an absolute easy sell. They were hot and sexy items to sell at the time. Everybody wanted them, right? And they were a craze. Again, you have crazy bones that were the same thing. They were a craze. You have, uh, you know, different toys all the time that are just crazes. And typically, like I just said before, toys. Toys is most mostly the craze. As a matter of fact, 98% of the time, these little toys are the crazes it's because children will dictate the craze. And then, you know, children being in schools will go ahead and want to show each other that they have the coolest new product. And you know what they do? They go to their parents and their parents don't want their kids to feel left out. And then the parents end up buying it for the kids. So typically with toys, you know, you can really, really make a lot of money if you position this correctly. And you're one of the first people that, uh, that get associated with your particular store. Now, here's the thing when it comes down to when it comes down to in demand and hype and being part of a craze I would go out there and create a specific asset like if I, if I was one of the first people into fidget spinners I'd call it the fidget spinner store.com and then automatically the fidget spinner store.com is associated with fidget spinners in the audience's mind and it becomes word of mouth marketing at that point as well so you kind of have the leverage and the one up at that point so in demand and hype is also something you want to go ahead and be able to you you know, do and use in your advantage and market commands. An example would, you know, would be women urban clothing. <clears throat> Fashion Nova, you know, carved a $2 billion empire from seeing the market and what was needed. Now, a market command, 
Uh, if you can go out there and deliver what the market doesn't have, but you can tell that they might want it, you can be extremely profitable. Fashion Nova delivered women's urban clothing at an extremely affordable price, and now they're doing $2 billion a year. So, and here's the thing, yeah, you, know, you don't really see Fashion Nova Facebook ads, they're using Instagram, which we'll talk about when we get to the traffic section. So again, finding the right niche for you, these are three different kind of outlets you can use, which is passion, in demand, and hype, and then market commands. Right? So kind of keep that in mind. So how do you spark niche ideas? Well, the best way to do this is to not really limit yourself and think, well, I have to find the best. Rather, you want to find one niche and see if there are people buying in that niche, right? Let me read that to you again. The best way to do this is not to limit yourself. Rather, you want to find one niche and see if people are buying inside of that niche. So you want clear indicators and clear indicators can be other stores, blogs with ads related to the product. Now here's something with ads, right? If you go to a blog or a forum, you're gonna be able to see if there's ads. Now if those ads on that particular blog or forum are related to what you're there for, then clearly advertisers aren't gonna be going out there spending money on ads if it wasn't profitable. However, maybe you're new into the niche. What you're gonna do is you're gonna keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it for maybe 15 to 20 days because if they're still advertising after 20 days, nobody's gonna be spending money. Nobody's gonna be burning money on advertisement unless they're actually profitable. By the time seven, eight days comes around, a typical advertiser will know whether or not their ads are profitable or not and Nobody's leaving their non-profitable ads running and wasting money. It does. It just doesn't make sense. So if there's ads on a website that you notice that constantly, constantly ad for that for that you know are being shown for maybe months on end, you already know that this advertiser is spending money because guess what? Those ads are making him or her money. So that tells you that there is a market. YouTube video reviews. If there's people that are going out there and reviewing these videos on YouTube and they're getting thousands, some even millions of views, that is fantastic. Look at the cosmetic industry, right? We already know the cosmetic industry whether it's makeup or whatnot they're going out there and absolutely crushing it given the fact that everybody's looking for these review videos and again you know these these women are and men are going out there and purchasing these cosmetic products like crazy and look for products on Amazon as well okay so if you're trying to tap into a niche see if there's particular products in that niche you're looking at it see how many there are if you know there's only like four or five products in that niche that means one of two things the first thing that it means is that clearly you might have found an untapped niche that you should definitely tap into or you found a niche that quite frankly isn't that profitable and that's why nobody's selling in it and you want to use other key indicators to see if you can actually find other resources that have maybe advertisements like I talked about before or reviews or maybe a big brand okay that people may know of so think about fishing right so fishing is is a pretty big niche and a big brand might be you know big bass fishing or whatnot for example okay so just kind of keep that in mind then you have forums magazines etc so when it comes down to a form or a magazine, nobody has, you know, for example, let's just go with the form first. The form, you can actually go to the bottom of the form and see how many members there are. If there's like 300 members and the form is number one on Google, that's a pretty bad sign. However, if there's like 300,000 members and it's on the first page of Google, that's a little better. If there's 3 million members, that's even greater, right? So essentially what you want to go ahead and do is keep in mind that it really does determine uh, you know, on the research that you conduct and the key indicators that you find. If you find big Instagram pages that have millions of followers, that's even better. If you find people in the niche, like if you find, let's go back to fishing. If you find a fisherman with four or five, six hundred thousand 600,000 followers, that is fantastic as well. If you find brands with millions of followers on Instagram, that's even better. So again, use these key indicators. Use multiple different sources to show you that this niche is proven and something that you can use. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go live and show you how I would spark some niche ideas with some simple research and Google Sheets. So let's go there now. So right over here, I'm actually in a Google Sheets file and you can access that at sheets.google.com. Now, the first thing is first, I just put a few niches and ideas in here, Chihuahua, African lions, pit bulls, African elephants. Now again, this is my passion, animals is my passion, so I went a little bit deeper into you know the the uh, types of animals. For example, an African elephant is a certain type of elephant. A pit bull is a certain type of dog breed. An African lion is some sort of you know lion here, right? Uh, Chihuahua is a certain type of dog breed. Now again, these are these are niches. However, what you can do, you know, you can type into uh, categories like dog bones, right? You can uh, do women's dresses, 
okay? We can do men's clothing, and we can do a few things here. What we're gonna wanna look for is, depending on how niche down you go, you wanna go into Google AdWords, and you can access this on adwords.google.com if you just sign in. So if I'm gonna go right here, if you just sign in, okay? You're gonna be able to go ahead and see something like this, and if you don't see this, you're gonna click on the little uh, toolbar icon and click on go back to previous AdWords. So all you wanna do is click on tools, okay? And then from here, you wanna to go to the keyword planner. Now the reason why we're doing this, I'm showing you a shortcut right now to save you a lot of time to see if there's people that are inside this audience that particularly are interested. So we're gonna click get search volume and data trends and we're gonna paste all of these right in here. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna see what the search volume is, right? So we're gonna click get search volume and from here, we're actually gonna see how many people are searching for each and every single one of these keyword terms. Now ideally, these are these are pretty good and it tells you the competition. Low, low, high, high, low, high, low. African lions, low competition, it's niche down. African elephant, low competition, it's niche down. Chihuahua, niche down. Pitbull, niche down, right? Men's clothing, high, because again, it's a category. Women's dresses, high, it's a category. Dog bone, high, it's a category. So obviously, you know, a dog bone is actual product, so that's why it's higher competition because more people want to go ahead and actually advertise against this. Women's dress, it's high competition because people want to advertise against this. Men's clothing, high because people want to advertise against this because it's typically what's known as buyer keywords. But we're not worrying about the suggested bid or anything else. We want to just look at the average monthly searches and see if it's healthy, right? Women's dress is 10,000 on the low end. I mean, it's kind of scary because, again, the category there, we can sell women's dresses, but we want to make sure that Something like that has a lot more people in it. Men's clothing, 100,000 to 1 million. Obviously, that's good. There's a lot of searches. Dog bone, this is fine, okay? This is healthy, 10,000 to 100,000. Now, here's the thing. Since we're not really using Google, we're gonna be using this as a idea, okay? We're gonna be using this as a stand -up standpoint to really go out there and see if this niche is validated. So how do we validate this? If it starts off with 10,000 to 100,000, those are the ones that I like to look at, okay? Now, I like to look at that because typically speaking, it's that these are the ones that are going to be more so easier to tap into because the people searching them are higher qualified to purchase. For example, women's dress, people wanna go ahead and women wanna buy dresses. African elephant, this one in this case isn't very, um, isn't very in particular to the, uh, or very partial to the buyer keyword. So this is something rather different. So when it comes down to this particular keyword, I would definitely suggest understanding that it's not so much of a buyer keyword, but you can get people to buy. Dog bone, people want to buy dog bones if they're searching this. They're clearly looking for something to purchase. Google's a very, very big purchase-based search engine. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and take a look at women's dresses. Actually, you no, know we're gonna look at dog bone. So I'm gonna type in dog bone into Google. And what I want to see is I see dog bone hunter, dog bone, dog plus bone, and we're gonna see what, uh, you know, what what these really are, and what they have to offer. So dog bone, I can see this is like a little free shipping on orders over fifty bucks. So I can tell this is somebody selling something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just take a look. All right, um, there's really I can't really see um, game recovery system. I can't really see. This is clearly what looks to be a Shopify store. So rather, I'm gonna look at this one and see what they have on their shop. Thank you very much, okay? So, all right, so on their shop, we have dog collars, right? Dog collars is exactly what I told you. They're not targeting a certain niche, but they're going out there and going ahead and, and showing uh, you know that you can really have this on any dog. So I searched dog bone. I don't really know why they're on here for dog bone, but I mean, hey, kudos to them. So let's just see here, here, adjustable leashes, gift cards. There's really nothing dog bone like here. So it's kind of weird. Dog bone plus collections all. So this is a Shopify store, but it's just like leashes and gift cards and stuff. They're probably doing very, very well. Keep that in mind. All right. So, and they have their pixel installed. I could see that. All right. So it just seems like they're selling a bunch of leashes, but they're ranking for dog bone, which Pretty interesting. If anybody here wants to go after the dog bone knee, uh, dog bone keyword, it clearly looks like it's easy. Um, let's just see here. White dog bone. Okay, white dog bone is another store. Again, if you could tell, this is the keyword that has a lot of different um, stores trying to sell stuff in it. 
So again, you see a lot of different products over here. So again, keyword looks very, very good to tap into given the fact that there are different stores that appear when I click on it. So again, that's how I'm gonna start doing niche research is looking at certain keywords, looking at certain niches I can go into and then running a search for them and seeing if there's other stores selling other products in it, right? So that's literally what I wanna do. So if I click here, I could see in all the different dog food and whatnot, I can take a look at the reviews, right? So sort by review count and see, okay, this right here, 42 reviews, that, that's really good. Right, sell price is five ninety nine. Right, so uh, even if we wanted to, we can just take a look if there's any type of margins. If we were to go and take a look on AliExpress really quickly, I just want to see if there's any type of margins. Um, don't know why it just showed me a knuckle bone. Uh, why it didn't show me any? Um, I don't know why it's like that. So dog bone, okay, and dog toys. I'm gonna take a look at you know different. Um, dog bone and dog feeding okay so um, I don't know why it's showing me bowls I guess they're not really too sure on how to uh, pronounce <laughs> bowls uh, bones maybe but okay we have these dog bones right here at 93 cents a piece dental chew bone that's really good that's very very good actually that you can put in your store perhaps you know um, use it as an example for an ad and what you can do with one of those is you can go and target pit bull lovers with a pit bull chewing on that bone and you can do the same thing with chihuahua lovers with chihuahuas chewing on that bone and you can really open up your um, your scope of targeting just by breeds of dogs at that point. So it's very, very powerful. So that's how I'm gonna go in and start doing niche research. There's there's absolutely no way to do this correctly, okay? There, there, there just isn't. Ideally, what you want to do when we talk about product selection in the next video is figure out how you can go out there and seamlessly find better products, which I'll cover in the next video. So without anything else being said, let's head in there right now.